Good morning, everyone. It is me, your humble neighborhood friendly snort salter. <clears throat> so, we're going to continue on with the letter of the alphabet, which is, I'm going to probably create another video as well. So, today we're going to do E. <coughs> uh, today, E, uh, emotional regulation. Yeah, E will be emotional regulation. Uh, today's letter uh, was conceived in reading discussions and forums on several of the stroke Facebook groups I belong to over the last couple of days. Um, so, because you've had a stroke and all emotions are basically initiated at the brain in response to stimulus, um, the reason why you have difficulty regulating your emotional states is because of your brain. <clears throat> it's not liking you so much. Now, it's got a fancy term, which is PBA. No, that's not PB and J. So there's no peanut butter involved here. It's pseudobulbar effect. Right? Uh, pseudobulbar effect is the latest name for a neurological condition that previously referred to as emotional lability, reflex crying, and an involuntary emotional expression disorder, among other names. Someone with PBA has involuntary bouts of crying, laughter, or episodic anger. The outburst may be out of proportion. Sad stimulus might cause an exaggerated weeping response instead of just a sigh, like, oh, oh well. That sucks. Turns into full-blown crying. Um, your moods may be uh, perceived as or appear incongruent, so you may laugh when you hear sad news. Uh, you know, or you may switch between rapid laughing and crying. Right? Uh, the effects are uncontrollable, and thus can occur <clears throat> without any emotional trigger. Right. So you don't have to have a trigger to start crying. You don't have to have a trigger to start laughing. Um, so your moods and your emotions might swing like a pendulum. Okay? PBA also occurs secondary neurological disease, uh, such as stroke, ALS, Parkinson's, traumatic brain injury, multiple sclerosis, dementia, Wilson's disease, or brain tumors. All right, so there's a series of disorders and, and, and issues that may cause PBA. <clears throat> right. So reading an article here real, real quick now are you going to have PBA no it, it's not a necessity right? like it's not something you will definitively have um, I'm gonna argue <clears throat> you're gonna have some of it uh, how bad will it be for you can't say right um, no, some of the emotional regulation or difficulty is the stroke, right? Some of the emotional regulation and difficulty is you trying to muddle through your world now because of the stroke. And some of the emotional regulation in my experience is in direct response to the people around you and how understanding they are, how mindful they are, uh, how truly sensitive they are to that, that this isn't just me, you know, like, you want to accuse me of faking? Great. You're going to get an emotional response. You want to treat me in a patronizing, condescending manner, <clears throat> you're going to get an emotional response. <laughs> right? Um, and it will be in direct proportion to how much of an asshole you are. So, 
there's something that I like to call the uh, douche canoe to twat waffle continuum. And de depending where you are on the douche canoe to twat waffle continuum will depend on the response you get. So if you choose to be a twat waffle or a douche canoe, uh, you will get a response in kind. Right? I'm going to call you on your shit. Right? Um, because it is not fair to me or anyone else that's suffering through you know, their world has been rocked by a stroke or MS or Parkinson's or a brain injury. <clears throat> if you have an if you have an inability at times to emotionally regulate, uh, and some of that is controlled because people just start treating you different, I'm I'm going to call you on it because it is not fair to me or anyone else because you can't control your shit because you're uncomfortable with what I'm going through. You know, um, I didn't ask for this. Well, I, I guess in a way maybe I did because I smoked. But it's not like I, you know, signed a pledge form and, you know, please let me have a stroke at work or ever. So, if you're going to be somewhere on the douche canoe to twat waffle continuum and your behavior towards me, I'm going to call you on it, right? And, and I'm not going to be gentle about it. I'm like, really? So I make you uncomfortable, do I? Yeah. So uh, are you always an asshole or is it just the fact that I've had a stroke makes you makes it the fact that you're an asshole? Uh, I have no problem with that. Um, because ultimately, my opinion is, and my philosophy is, I'm going to be the only advocate for me. Right? You... Um, might want to support me in my endeavors, <clears throat> might, want, might want to wish me well, but ultimately I'm the only advocate for me. And I'm going to advocate for what is best for me. Now, the problem is, <clears throat> you now have to delineate your rationale for having difficulty controlling your emotions. Is it the brain being rewired? Right? There's not much you can legitimately do about that because it's the brain doing it. Right? Uh, so there may be medications um, that might help you. There may be uh, therapy, uh, intervention techniques that may help you. <clears throat> now, then you have the fact that post-stroke, you're now at a light, higher likelihood uh, for mood-related disorders, right? So you may have post-stroke depression. You may have uh, post-stroke anxiety. You may develop a social-based disorder because you are so concerned about how others will perceive you and interact with you, um, you are deciding to recoil <clears throat> and disengage from those scenarios. All of which, which is possible, right? I found some articles online, which again, I will link into the, uh, the video so that way people can see where I'm getting my data from and maybe it will help them. Now, the problem is this. People already don't understand how to deal with you because you've had your stroke. Right, um, you know, it, it is the ultimate in um, life disrupting events. Right, you will find people really don't know how to deal with your shit, and that, what I mean by that is just the fact that you've had a stroke. Right, so there will be emotional changes after a stroke. Right. Um, and that's the way it is. So you're gonna have to you're gonna have to educate the people around you, right? Um, one, if you have fits of crying or laughter, right, um, for whatever reason, um, and some of it is based around you know your frustrations of 
you know, you're realizing I could do this three weeks ago before my stroke or six months ago before my stroke, and now it's just a shit show, right? Being told not, not crying, well, yeah, thanks for not allowing me to own my own emotions, right? Um, <clears throat> there's no reason for the people around you to feel embarrassed or the need to be restrained or hesitant to discuss topics that might be sensitive around your stroke because of you that might make you cry, right? Um, you know, I have to live in this world too. Um, and the fact that you want to be hesitant or restrained in bringing up topics of conversation that might be sensitive to me due to my stroke, um, which are directly related somehow to my stroke, yeah, just shut up and talk, right? Don't, don't, or shut up and talk, that's kind of duality. Yeah, great choice, Numpty. Um, you know, just shut up and say it. Just, just, again, great choice. Just, just stop being a dickhead and just say what you need to say, right? Um, if you are in a situation where you don't want to be emotionally distracted, so to speak, like you don't, you, it, it's not really appropriate, you either, you either need to leave the area, have your little breakdown, and I've actually had to do that, <clears throat> It's fun. Or ask someone to change the topic of conversation for you. Right? you know, work out like a safe word with a friend or a hand signal. Like, right? um, you may find it difficult to regulate your emotions when other people are emotional, right? Um... So people might start to cry when you talk about things, or they may feel they need to leave the room because you are talking about something. Right? Because they're having problems trying to put together the fact that you've had a stroke. Especially if you've had a stroke young. Like, if you've had a stroke outside old people territory, right? You're not in your 80s, or, or latter 70s. You know? Um... Let people know that I'd prefer you don't just leave the room. You, you don't. If you really feel the need to abandon me, that's great. But abandonment does not equal support, right? Because the fact that I've had a stroke is not going to change. But let me just say that for those in the back that might miss that. The fact that anyone has had a stroke is not going to change. The fact that you cannot deal with the information that someone in your world has had a stroke fucking grow up. Right? If you do happen to have moments where you begin to cry or laugh unexpectedly um, or get a bit angry, right? Have them treat it like a minor inconvenience. Right? And just continue the world as it was as it was occurring before. Continue on with the activity, continue on with the conversation. Don't make a big deal about it. It's just, you know, what? we're just moving on. Right? We just got to get through this, um, you know, and, and we'll get it fixed. When situationally and contextually appropriate, hug doesn't hurt, you know, um, you know, touch on the arm. And here becomes a bit of a difficulty. You being genuinely upset. may not be perceived the same way now post stroke because they might consider it you being just emotional right you might be having a difficulty with emotional regulation you're going to have to tell people hey this isn't me being emotional i'm actually concerned and upset about this right now for those stroke assaulters out there that experience this this is where you need to be clear, concise, concrete, and congruent in your communication. You need to be clear with the people around you. I am upset. This has nothing to do with my stroke and me being emotional due to my stroke. I am upset, right? So, you put out a clear statement. I am upset. You need to be concise about why you're upset. You now need to label the reasonings behind you being upset. I'm upset about this due to that. 
right? And then you need to make sure that your language is congruent to the situation. Your emotions may not be from time to time, but as long as your language is congruent, right? So in 120 words or less, tell me exactly why you're upset. Tell me what has you upset, why that's upsetting to you, right? And that might help. However, I can't guarantee that's going to work in every situation. Um, I've tried it with a few people, and some of them don't quite get it. But then again, I'm going to say that they may not have the emotional intelligence to understand the fact that I'm trying to be direct with them um, because I want to make sure that they understand where I am at, right? And it's not just me being emotional, right? And then lastly, you are going to find people on the douche canoe to twat waffle scale that are going to think you're looking for a pity party, right? And unfortunately, if you encounter those people, you need to go to A is for assholes. So, um, emotional regulation. The stroke itself is in a very emotionally cluttered period of time, right? You're going to have your stroke, you're going to have denial, you're going to have uh, panic attacks, you're going to have moments of self-bargaining, you're going to be crying, you're going to have grieving. Right? This is a very emotionally confusing period of time in your life, just the fact that you've had a stroke. Um, and because every stroke is unique to the individual, every experience is unique to the individual. It just doesn't help now that we have an inability to effectively self-regulate our emotions, which again had that big flowerly name of pseudo-bulbar effect, right? Um, and unfortunately, it's a thing all of us stroke assaulters out there are going to learn how to learn how to learn how to deal with, right? Ooh, aphasia. Ooh. Or was that just me stuttering? I don't know which. I've had a stroke. So, and had aphasia. So, at that point, when you stumble out into your world, uh, and you have to deal with people in your world, all I can suggest is, one, Try to educate those around you that, you know what, this is what I need from you. You know, if, if this happens, don't panic. Just, just let's continue on the conversation, right? The fact that I'm getting emotional, right, has really nothing to do with the conversation typically. It's the fact my body and my brain don't like each other. And my brain is kind of, you know, having a bit of a fit. If you do encounter someone that sits somewhere between the douche canoe and twat waffle scale, um, deal with them accordingly, right? Uh, as is situationally appropriate. Um, that might become uncomfortable for some of the douche canoes and twat waffles out there, but again, don't care about them. I care about me. I'm my own advocate, and, and that's the, my opinion. Um, uh, you know, that's the school of that's the philosophy that I practice and I believe should be practiced by everyone that's had a stroke. You are your own advocate, right? Tell the world what you need and let them deal with it. And if they can't, fuck them. <clears throat> so on that note, if you happen to like what you've been watching, uh, we're coming up on the three-month mark in a, about a week. Please, like, share, subscribe with your friends. If there's content you want to see me cover, something about a stroke, stroke recovery, rehabilitation... Uh, in, in in specific to my journey or in just general terms at all, hey, you know, just leave a comment down below or you can contact me at uh, strokeassalter at gmail.com. I say again, strokeassalter at gmail.com. And if you're not enjoying what you're watching, dude, you're 18 minutes and 55 seconds into a video. Like, there's got to be better things. Like, there's got to be. So, at that point, if you happen to see... Uh, either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, uh, that being facial droop, right? That being the inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all. The slurred stuttering speech, 
uh, inability to smile equally effectively at all, uh, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, general body weakness or weakness on one side, inability to stand unaided, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.